Hi, guys. Um, there is a very good uh, presentation on the other room uh, from Rod Garbas, if you want to be there. We're going to talk about semantics here. Uh, my name is Hector Velarde, and this is Juan Pablo. We work in Juan Pablo Jimenez. We work at Simples Consultoria, and this presentation is going to, we're going to talk about our, um, we're trying to implement some semantics uh, inside Plon for a very specific use case, okay? This use case is about news media in Plon. Uh, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about the story uh, of this, uh, how it, uh, it came. Mm. In, in 1995, uh, La Jornada uh, became the first Spanish language news newspaper on the, on the web. Uh, and in 2005, I was working in that newspaper. Uh, I was commissioned to deliver a new version of the new site uh, just to present the breaking news stuff uh, on it. We begin um, trying to find out how to do this. I, I, I came from the PHP world, and I asked the guy who was in charge in, in the first place of implementing the website, uh, what do you think, uh, what kind of CMS uh, can we use? He came with two options. One was written in Perl, and the other was written in a language I never heard about, that it was Python. After I saw a few lines of Perl code, I decided <laughs> that we were using Plon. So <laughs> it was easy choice. Uh, Plon at that time was really, uh, was really nice. Everybody was talking very good about SOAP and Plon. Uh, we were talking about 2000 and and, and five, I, I already told you, it was Plon 2.1. Uh, we were trying to figure out how to put the content inside uh, Plon. That was our first problem. And we discovered that Plon came with a content type defined that it was the news item, but the news item was really limited. And it was a time of um, archetypes, as, as I told you, and the idea was to create a new content type for, for everything. So our, our first uh, approach of creating probably a, a content type for an opinion uh, piece, uh, another for a news, art, a news article, another one for a column, was really uh, proved to be a mistake, it was a complete disaster. And we tried to find, to, to learn a little bit more because I, I came to this job, but I am not, uh, I was in fact, I'm graduated of in, on electronics. I was not an ex ex expert on, on this stuff. And I tried to find out how to solve it, the problem. So we discovered the IPTC, that is um, an organization that tries to, to make some uh, regulations or, or try to tries to to develop some standards for the news industry. Probably you have heard about the <coughs> IPTC stuff inside the J, uh, JPJX uh, images, but we discovered also that there were another uh, format that is called the NITF, and also NITF was used to, to describe metadata inside new news items. And we discovered also about news codes that were taxonomies, about, for instance, genres uh, of news items, or probably about uh, uh, urgencies or whatever. I don't know. <coughs> and there was, uh, there was another standard that is, was called NewsML that was used for uh, news exchange. And in the meantime, Plon 2.5 came in, and the SOAP component architecture came in, and then we discovered that we probably could put, put together the original Plon news, uh, news item with some uh, fields uh, in the form of a schema standard. And we came to, with a solution that was, it was still working until the, the other day. So we saw this 
this way. The second problem is after a few years uh, working on, on other stuff, I came back to, to the Plum community and a friend of mine called me to help him help him deliver some sites for news media in, in Venezuela. Uh, I just uh, skipped the Plum 3 version and started working on, on Plum 4. That was really nice. I discovered dexterity and behaviors and all that stuff. And we started uh, building the, a new uh, uh, package called Collective N NITF that it's a uh, dexterity based. And it was based on our previous work on, on the newspaper. We decided this uh, package has to be folderish, it has to have different views, it has to have a better user experience for the uh, editors that were creating the, the news items. So probably I can show you, uh, I will try to show you how does it work, so how does it look, it looks. This is a, a, a Plum site we install with some stuff. Let's add a news article. Okay, this is uh, an article. Uh, we can, it's al al almost the same of the, the news article of Plum. Uh, So there is some uh, custom fields and uh, some sections and genre and urgency and That's it. So this is a news item. It's, it's probably the same. Uh, th the good stuff over here is probably we can add some some images very easily. I'm not going to put any anything else in here. So this is it. And we now have a, a news item with a gallery, whatever, and you can have like uh, different views, a, a gallery view over here, that it's, that's it, and it's responsive and whatever. So this is what we developed for, for the sites in Venezuela, it is currently being used, and uh, we suddenly discovered that some of the stuff we developed here uh, we can uh, spin off this stuff, and we created various packages. Uh, for instance, the upload stuff uh, was uh, put it on, on another package, and we create a package for widgets, and we create a chart content, whatever. So the second problem was already solved. But we found a new problem. And at the end of, of uh, last year and the beginning of this year, we were working here in, in Brazil uh, to develop a couple of uh, new new sites, uh, one for, uh, no, two for magazines, isn't it? And we already had this kind of uh, functionalities, but we want uh, to have more stuff on it. So uh, what do we want to do? For instance, let me show you what you can find in, in, Go in Google right now. If you, for instance, try to make a, a search on Dilma Rousseff, As you can see, Google here is, it, this is, and this is pretty new. I think it has uh, six months or something like that. They, they try to give you more information. They know that Dilma Rousseff is, if, is a person. They, they have the, her uh, biography here. They have news about her. If, and if you look here in news, you will see some cool stuff. For instance, uh, here is a, a quote. And we have uh, here only uh, news items on Dilma Rousseff. And you can see here as a picture that is taken from this site. Let's see this one from BBC. Oh, 
And as you can see, uh, Google is uh, taking the, the title of the, of the news item or, and the, the also the, the photo. Where is the photo? Oh, no, here is not. Uh, okay. But the idea is, is to try to, to make our content uh, more easily to find for Google, okay? So, uh, how can you do this? For instance, uh, if you make a, a search on, on any search engine, probably you, don't, you, you can have an inspector results. For instance, you, you search for Python, you can, you can find this, or maybe you are trying to find a, a pistol, or uh, a roller coaster in, in Netherlands, or Monty Python, or Python the language. How do you tell uh, Google or other search engines that you are talking about the specific stuff? Okay, HTML is about syntax, semantic is, is about meaning. And we try, uh, started to, uh, to try to understand what was the, this, this semantic web stuff that the W3C was talking about. Uh, Plon already comes with uh, some semantic stuff on it. Uh, it's called the Dublin Core. It's, it's from the very beginning, I think, I, I, I don't know. But again, this is good for some kind of documents, but it's not good for everything. For instance, in, in, in news articles, we have a lot of stuff that is not covered with the, with the Dublin Core stuff. And also you can find like uh, information about authors or information about events or other kind of information that is not covered with this. It, this is not enough. So we started uh, making re some research and we find first that we had three standards to make this happen. Uh, and I think uh, Juan Pablo. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, th there is uh, three standards and we show choose one, and it's not an, in, an, an easy uh, choice because uh, there is no one, uh, what is clearly one, the, 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 the war between us. Uh, so we, we try to, to find one that is simple to implement and then is more open uh, than the others. Uh, so, uh, well, this is a, a quote for uh, Manny Spori. Uh, the entire web community should decide which features should be supported, not just Microsoft, Google, or Yahoo. Uh, next. Bien. Oh, okay. Uh, so uh, we we choose uh, to use uh, error news uh, embedded on uh, HTML5 uh, using RDF. Hey, <laughs> sorry, uh, because it was really simple to imp to implement. Uh, we have some examples uh, of templates and. We, at the beginning, we just need to customize uh, NIF templates because we are uh, changing uh, the markup of the of the of the page to include uh, just some properties to indicate uh, the meaning of uh, of the content of, uh, in those tags. Uh, there we we face it some problems because uh, Plone uh, uh, is big. Uh, uh, when you render uh, some content, you are rendering a lot of stuff, uh, bullets, uh, maybe portlets, maybe some uh, other uh, things. They come from from main template uh, and. Uh, that was a problem because we ended 
Kuzomaisin bullets because some of the of the uh, meaningful data to to Google or uh, to some uh, search engine uh, or computers in, in general was in the bullets, not in the in the content uh, of the page. Uh, yes. So uh, this is a custom version of the doc document byline. Yes. We have need need uh, byline and uh, the original one uh, document byline. If you look at the, the, the changes are really simple, uh, but uh, there is a problem in there because you, we need to customize plan app lay layout uh, to get uh, these changes uh, into the pages. So we face problems with uh, the version of the sterility because uh, we started uh, devel developing this for uh, Plum 4.3, uh, and then we realized uh, this on, don't work on previous version of, of Plum because Bullet uh, changed it from version to, to version, and, and we ended uh, making changes on Plum App layout to support two different versions of uh, dexterity content uh, because there is. Uh, uh, some changes in the in the way you can do shoulder sex uh, related items in dexterity one and dexterity two. Was. So the the idea, uh, our main idea, yeah, uh, when we re registered this talk was to show you what were the results. But after all these problems we found, uh, everything was not so easy to implement and we, we could not uh, put this in production uh, on our customer that we wanted to, to use it. But uh, I think this probably is gonna be one of the first attempt to, to try to implement this. I don't know if some of you have some other experience. It could be very interesting on, on this. The conclusion on this, uh, what, what we get on, on this uh, story is we were using Grok on the, on the first place that I, I we, we forgot to, to talk up about it. We were using Grok on the first place, but we had to remove it. And we have to uh, include the HTML5 uh, uh, tags. And we, we do all of this on the same uh, iteration and we made a mistake because it's better to, to try to implement few stuff, uh, release, made uh, the other changes and then release that try to, to implement uh, all at, uh, at the same time. But uh, anyway, uh, I think it was quite important because even uh, if we face this kind of, uh, of problems, we were able to fix some stuff in the, in the Plum core that uh, now it's gonna be very easy to, to put this on, on production. So that's it for, for now. We, you can use this uh, right now. Uh, we take this uh, quote from Tim Berners-Lee. I think you you probably uh, guess that uh, we are in this world right now. And that's it. If you have any uh, question about it, we are open to to hear. Actually, we we want to learn. No? This this was just a, uh, an attempt to implement some semantics on Plum, but we obviously failed up to now. <laughs> Questions? So I, I know from experience that it's not trivial to deal with. Well, when you're dealing with Plon and it's uh, figures out the way you want uh, your site to be, the way it is designed, Plone is perfect, it's trivial. When you're trying to tame Plone to become something that you want it to be, then it's, sometimes it's hard. Uh, and semantic technologies, uh, it's like drink water from the fire hose because there's a lot of information and 
it's still bleeding edge. People are, are still learning how to do it right. Uh, and my question is, when you're dealing with journalists, and uh, I, I, uh, I have experience with archetypes, but not so much with dexterity. If I'm not mistaken, with dexterity, you can define the schema through the web as well. Yes. That's correct. Yes. And uh, in the past, like uh, six years ago, when we proposed to journalists that they would have the power to change the schema of the objects, uh, the environment was against because they did not want the schema to change frequently. They did not want the editors to have the power to change the schema uh, that often. Do you have anything to comment on that? Uh, I, I didn't found this this kind of problems. In, in fact, I, I think that we we face another uh, different problem because we sometimes face an apathy uh, on the side of, of the, the guys on the other side of uh, that are putting in, uh, the information inside the computer. We we are defining what are they are using. They are not participating on this at all. Uh, makes sense. I, I have no. As, as I told you, we have very few experience on, on this. This is our first attempt to, to implement this. I think it makes sense to start from very uh, small stuff. You, you are trying to implement this. Anybody else is trying to implement this? Are you dealing with the schema or are you dealing with RDFI? How are you doing this, guys? Um, uh, from one year, I've been working at global.com. Uh, and there, since 2009, they already have a, a platform to handle semantics. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing that I think would match the model that Splone has is when you go to the metadata tab, you are instantiating something, and in the metadata tab, you can fill in the blanks of um, Dublin Core categories, or you're going to do your tagging. At that point, you could create a semantic tab that would fetch a schema from a semantic database. When you fetch the schema from the semantic database, you render the form according to the predicates in the database. Mm -hmm. So it does that dynamically. When you fill in the, the, um, the form, the result of saving that form, instead of saving an object in ZODB, you could add triples back to the semantic database. That would be one way to work with these things. Uh, and, and the advantage is that once all the information is in the semantic database, you can do queries using Sparkle that would navigate the graph and uh, produce things that you could use as a knowledge graph. OK, so you are using Air uh, EF. We, yes, we, we're using semantics, but we're not using Plone as an infrastructure for delivering it. And, and not as much because it's not adequate. It's something more that with the, it, it, uh, it's because of the historical context of the organization. Because uh, I think the, the main problem we faced at the beginning, this, this was, uh, we, we began talking about this like eight months ago, but we found that as you, you, as you can do it in three different ways, it was difficult to decide which one was the, the best. You mean the standard in which you're going to publish the data, right? Yeah, yeah th th that stuff, I think uh, HTML5 now has a lot of uh, guidelines and accommodates one thing called schema.org. I don't know if you... Yeah, uh, schema.org, it's... Uh, Microformat, I think it, it, it is called. Because yeah. we have on the, on the beginning, we had the, the micro data. Yeah. No, microformats. Microformats was, was, was one of was the, the first. first. Yeah. Then we had the, or I, don't, or I don't know if it was first the RDFI. And then came the, the micro data. That is this effort 